tonight on Bog Panda, Mike and I are going to discuss the Amber Nick RG thirty five XX, including whether or not we recommend this is a good purchase. Uh, welcome to Bog Panda. I'm Kelly at K E L L Y T H U L on Twitter and Instagram. I am Doctor Mike with a fresh beer for all you drink cucks out there who only watch for that. You can find me at Official Pagan on everything. Kelly loves it when I say stuff like that. You can tell by his face. <laughs> it's the doctor part that bugs me the most. <laughs> it's a factual thing. I, I have factual. a doctor's office. Not factual. You can say it as <laughs> often as you like. The doctor's office accounts. <laughs> Make sure you guys like, subscribe, turn on notification, leave your comments about how I'm a real doctor and you would totally let me examine you. And then stop back and watch some hard no, the world's shortest podcast. They're so quick. You can burn through a lot of them. And you know what? I have a sneaking suspicion. They're just going to keep coming out every single day. Yep. The Chinese water torture of podcast. <laughs> just keep <laughs> coming. For us or for the audience? Uh, for the audience, I think. But it's the, you know, it's, it's short, you know, it's, it, it's a fleeting pain. You should just, you know. But like just like the little drop in the water torture, just just one little drop. So worth See, checking out. Look at this personal growth. I almost threw in just the tip, but I didn't say that because I've grown as a person. Yeah, that that's not been my <laughs> experience, but okay, we'll, we'll go with that. Uh, yeah, so we wanted to kind of talk <laughs> a little bit about uh, caught a we caught a video on on YouTube like you do. Uh, that that uh, talked about this. Uh, it's been out for a while, but uh, a pretty interesting option from a portable retro gaming standpoint. So this is a uh, again Ambernick. We'll include a link to uh, where you can buy it on Amazon, and a little more on that later. But uh, the Ambernick RG thirty five XX, which is quite a name, <laughs> I think they could their marketing department needs to tweak it a little bit. I think because that's just not. Oh, it rolls off the tongue. Yeah, it, it's almost like the Sinclair something or other <laughs> that uh, we had to deal with. Um, but uh, it um, it kind of looks like a Game Boy uh, in terms of kind of form factor. Uh, it um, appears to do a really nice job, particularly in the 16-bit world uh, in terms of game, and actually even a little further than that into some some PlayStation 2 type of stuff and et cetera, Nintendo 64 stuff. Basically, it looks like from a playability standpoint there. Now, what was stressed over and over again on the video that Mike and I had a chance to see was that this was available for under $70. Um, I've not seen that unless you go through eBay, <laughs> and uh, then you might be able to get one. But I'm seeing them on Amazon, not a whole lot more, but it's more like 78 bucks you know, or whatever there. So, but still under a hundred bucks, uh, for the system. So what did, what did you think as, uh, as you kind of looked at the feature set on this bad boy, Mike? So I, I've checked out a few of these different things when they'll pop up as Amazon recommendations, because I'm usually, if I'm on, I buy absolutely everything on Amazon, but I'm on Amazon at least once a week, looking at retro gaming stuff and looking at vinyl records to buy. <laughs> I don't always buy every week, but a lot of times I do. So I'm always on there. So those are all of my recommendations now at this point, which is great. Um, so these kinds of devices will always pop up. I'm always kind of hesitant with these because it's different when you're buying something like a Super Console X because you even if some of the ROMs don't work, you can just load it up with ROMs. With these handheld devices, you don't really know what the build quality is going to be. It's not just a box with ROMs loaded onto it. Like when we got Super Console X, we knew those weren't going to be great controllers. We both have good controllers that we can use for that. You're kind of stuck on a handheld with the build of the handheld. So that that's always been the thing that's deterred me from one of these systems and instead pushed me over to something more official like the Evercade. Yeah, uh, same for me, uh, although this one, the price point, you know, the price point is intriguing because it's under a hundred bucks uh, and it appears that quality wise um, that uh, this is pretty sound. They, and it, it, uh, and I still don't know whether it's pro appropriate to pronounce Tate or Tate, <laughs> but there, there is a, a, a vertical mode on it. 
uh, that you can do by turning the handheld device and and playing it playing it that way, uh, which is you know not unlike the the Evercade EXP, uh, but uh, the there's some triggers on the back of this device, so it's got you know it looks a lot like a Game Boy in terms of the kind of yeah. front part where you've got uh, the buttons and then the D pad and and all that, but then there's a couple. There's some buttons that are across across the back, so when you need to get into more of the six button type of thing, or in uh, the Tate or Tate mode, sometimes those come into play too. So it looked pretty flexible. It looked pretty good. One of the things that um, I was appreciative of uh, is that from a you know it's not a complete ROM dump like you know much as Mike and I like Super Console X. There's some major ROM dumpage <laughs> that occurred on oh, Super yeah. Console. Yeah. There's a lot of duplicate games uh, and a lot of games are, that don't don't even kind of take off. But this appears to be a little more thoughtfully curated list. That you still have that. Uh, there is still kind of a here's the Japanese version and the European version and and some of, some of these types of things. But it's not as excessive as it is uh, on a lot of these other devices that you get from Ken Hank and and all of that. So I thought, you know, a good curation of games. I think the games they put on there all work <laughs> uh, and a uh, pretty wide variety of things and look quality wise, pretty, pretty interesting. So the big question is, um, I guess two questions is one, would we as a show with our reputation on the line recommend this as a purchase? And then two, are you going to buy one? Um, <clears throat> so I'll start backwards with that. I think I probably will. I think with the price point and seeing a, a positive. So the video that we saw um, that particular host, I'm a fan, not only a fan of his videos, I bought his book that he wrote about 32 X. So I, I feel like we're in, we're both huge 32 X fans. So I feel like we're in line on things there. So I feel pretty confident if he's saying that, because I, I've watched him talk about things and, and bring up the pros and cons of different things. And he did talk about, you know, the Tate mode not really being comfortable and, you know, virtual games losing the screen space and things like that. So it wasn't just all him plugging something like he talked about different things. So uh, I do think I, I at that price point and given the review, I would feel confident buying this. Yeah, Um so I'm I'm kind of the same as as you in that you know so I still have Evercade XP on my mind, <laughs> you know that that's that's really from a handheld perspective really the next major upgrade I'd like to do, uh, and that's you know different world that's you're getting cartridges and lots of uh, lots of games that that way and a you know double plus you know the the price point uh, of this device, but you know the switch. Uh, even the Evercade EXP or just the original Evercade, um, they are portable ish. But mm -hmm. if you're talking about throwing something in your pocket and taking off, you don't really do that with a switch. <laughs> um, but this looks like you could. So, this, I mean, this looks like highly portable, a uh, nice small form factor that if you're just kind of needing to kind of kill some time while you're waiting to see the eye doctor or whatever, this seems to be a good way to go. And so, that and that's really what I was thinking with this because this honestly this wouldn't replace Evergate for me. I'm um, I'm a huge fan of Evergate and I'm going to continue to, you know, down the path of whatever they come out with. Um, I have a bunch of their cartridges. I'm a fan of their the whole way they do everything. The quality of all their stuff is excellent, and I'm going to continue with Evercade. This is more the idea of like Kelly was saying, you could just put this in your pocket and take it anywhere. So that, and that's really what I see this as there's, there's, I'm not always going to carry my Evercade around with me. Evercade is great for car rides and things like that. But if I know I'm going to be out and about where I'm going to be having a lot of downtime somewhere, but I don't want to carry a bunch of stuff with me, something like this, I could just stick in a pocket of a hoodie. That's perfect. Yep. Absolutely. And not yeah, that I, I would like want it to get broken, but it's 70, $80. It's not like the end of the world if something were to happen to it. Yeah. For a plane ride, a car trip, things like the Switch and the Evercade, perfect for that. You can kind of kind of go on. But if it is just kind of about town or like when Mike does some of his stalking visits where he's just got, you know, in a vehicle parked outside for hours at night, uh, this might be a better way to go. So because particularly because you need to move to avoid detection. 
So uh, something to think about. Cool. So I think the show's recommending it, and there's a pretty decent chance that uh, both of us are going to be owners of this device uh, through a combination of quality and price. So anything else to add for this show, Mike? I don't think too much. The only thing I would say, um, you, you would hit on something that I, I've seen brought up multiple times, talking about duplicates on these kind of ROM dump systems. And that is a big problem with the kin hang systems and things like that. One thing I don't mind though <clears throat> is, and I've seen multiple people mention this, the idea of like, oh, it has the North American release and the Japanese release. I oftentimes those there's differences between those games. So I don't mind if they include them when there's differences between the games, but like on super console X, for example, there are just doubled up games yep. that, that just don't that are just the same games under different systems and things like that. Like there's, there's um at least one 32 X game that's doubled up under just Genesis. And it's, it's the 32X version, the 32X ROM that's on there. Not any different than what's under the 32X. It just as an example, there's a lot of them. but yep. So there are just doubled up games. When it comes to different regions, as long as the, the ROMs are different. So an awesome example would be um, the Streets of Rage games, which are extremely popular. The Japanese versions of those are far more popular. And I remember even back in the cartridge days, people would pay extra money for the import copies of those from specialty stores. They'd pay like a hundred. I had friends who paid like a hundred dollars for the import copies of those back in the nineties when that was like paying $500 now or something for a game, like insane amounts of money. So I remember those just being highly sought after. So something like that. Yeah. I would want both of those on there to really kind of play around with that. But yes, uh, I'm a hundred percent not on board with the ROM dumps of just getting everything. Uh, there's another thing Kelly and I were looking at that I'm sure we'll do a show about soon that seems like they've mostly avoided that on there too. Just a teaser for people to come back. Best way to keep track of that is to subscribe. And you'll be notified and turn that, hit that bell. So you're notified when new content comes out. See that I'm getting you in the front. Kelly's getting you in the back. Thanks for watching everyone. Thanks everybody. <laughs>